information yeah. on what to yeah. do and where to find it and just sort of pop it up there on the screen? Well, we're trying to do that kind of thing. We, we have handouts. We have all sorts but of I'm things. But I'm just thinking, thinking word of there, mouth in the front of, in the beginning of a... you of those people yeah. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah no, that's not a bad audience. idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we, like, pay per view or we just sort of pay, like, a set amount and it doesn't matter how many people watch it? Generally. I don't know, Betty. Well, some of the services are pay per view, like Hoopla is. Okay. And Canopy, I'm, I'm not sure whether that's pay per view. Okay. Pay per view. Um, but generally, what you do, what we would do is buy a set amount of, uh, we would set out a certain amount of money. I got you. And we haven't gone over that amount of money yet. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Something just came up. I saw for the, for the Frankenstein series, the mm -hmm. um, movies mm -hmm. with Mike, I mm -hmm. know, with Jill's husband. Maybe he could make a plug for Canopy, you know, or have that's, okay. mention yeah. it and mm -hmm. then have a little. Car, you know, well, that's not a bad idea because mm -hmm. the Frankenstein because program. Because if people yeah. are coming, they're interested in movies. Right. Right. They are undoubtedly. I saw one time. I'll just say it was the uh, barista championship of the U.S. championship. Uh. And all these baristas came and um, were taking the coffee. So it's kind of, you know, I love coffee and it's just, you know, <laughs> it was cool. I mean, it was canopy. Yeah. And, and do you have to go to Canopy through the library website, or do you yeah. go to Canopy? Okay, so it's not like Hoopla where you go to Hoopla directly. Well, I, I think, think you can go, go directly. directly. I just, but you, you, you can go either way. It. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it's. Um, you know, it's fairly simple to use. It's got the Criterion film collection on it, which is kind of an yes. independent yeah. film series. And then it has um, quite a bit of other things, including the um, the Modern Scholars sort of teaching uh, oh. videos. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. lectures, basically. Oh, okay. Do they have any foreign films? Foreign films? Yes. Tons yeah. of foreign films. Yeah. Feature films. So like there, there's a lot films. there. Yeah. It's a lot okay. there. So do you have any questions more for me? Okay. Thank Kathleen, you. you're okay. welcome. Uh, Thank you, ben. Sure. Uh, big news from the trustee yeah. point of view, not news to anyone here, well, most of us. Um, so we did hire a new director, uh, Anthony Austin. We have here the press release. Um, I'll say a few words about him Did for the purpose that? of Did everyone who no, is sorry, going to be yeah. listening to this. Um, first of all, he will uh, start on October 29th. Uh, he comes to us from where, from uh, Mount Prospect Library, where he is the assistant director uh, since 2017. Um, in that role, he oversaw training and staff for of 180 people. Um, he was also has experience in the annual budgeting um, and uh, oversaw, you know, IT building services and security departments. Uh, he's had familiarity with renovations um, and all great, you know, pluses from our point of view. Prior to being at Mount Prospect, um, he was at the Palatine Public Library District, first as an assistant director and then as director. Um, and for, from uh, 2014 to 2017. Um, he has you know, been a librarian since 2001, has his uh, MLS from uh, Dominican University, um, and he's worked at a couple. At uh, University of Chicago Graduate School Library. So he has a very nice, broad resume. Um, he, um, we're looking forward to him joining us. Uh, he's been in contact with me. We're setting up some time for we can get together before he start. He's asked for a lot of information, to, you know, so that he can get, you know, hit the ground running, as they say. And and Gail and Betty have been working diligently planning sort of an orderly onboarding process with him and with Mike, and so um, we're very much looking forward to him joining the staff. So that's exciting news for us. Um, all right, um, but maybe before we get to the ILA, um, maybe um, Lisa, you could talk about the legislative breakfast um, that we um, attended 
What is it already? This is going to be September. 918. I'm going to give you a two minute snapshot. September 7th. We had a wonderful representation, and some of the highlights were Wilmette District 39. Uh, one of the things in terms of some of the best practices is with their annual, re re with their strategic plan, what they have on their website is a barometer to show their success mm -hmm. and show where they are in terms of progress. And I thought that was an excellent idea that we mm -hmm. might want to look mm -hmm. into. In terms of what their issues are, vaping and education, you know, and they're looking for it, for the library, possibly for educational supplements. Mm. And then uh, Laura Fine basically was there, and one of the things that she said is basically what they're doing is hold harmless for four years in terms of taxation. Mm -hmm. And I think all three of the school districts that were present, three, yeah, three were present, three. Uh, their biggest concern basically to the legislators was the, number, was the amount of paperwork that mm -hmm. keeps coming and the requirements for less money. Mm -hmm. in terms of the burden that they're asking. Right. Unfunded mandates. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Robin Gable was there, and uh, one of the things is that she's looking at in terms of funding the police pension, combining both the fire and pol police, and that it's a local decision that she not freeze property tax, is what mm -hmm. she says, because she wants to make sure the schools are adequately funded. Someone was there from Jan, I always mess up her name, she's Housey's office, and one of the things that they felt was a great opportunity for the library was with the census in terms of to help them with their outreach efforts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of, uh, it's a VOCA really that has a strategic plan with the measurement, mm -hmm. so I messed up. It's not District 39, but a VOCA has, both of them have strategic plans, but a VOCA actually has a, a barometer on their website. Do you mean like a thermometer or a barometer? Uh, huh. it, it's, a, it's looking at where their progress is with actual information. Okay. It's not just a, something that's going No, up. no, 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 okay. no. It's basically <laughs> what the accomplishments are and where they're at. Right. With Great. their strategic plan in terms of what's been fulfilled. Yes. And then Nutria High School, some of their issues were vaping, stress, yeah. technology, security, mm -hmm. and they're in the midst of getting ready to do a community survey. And then Wilmette Junior High, uh, District 39 again, excuse me, they're, open, they're starting a kindergarten enrichment program that's fee-based, and their focus with the students are, is personalized learning. Mm -hmm. So those were some of the highlights, and then I think a wonderful thing was the group that meet, the directors that meet, uh, gave the cards, yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. so that, that the right. director can start oh. and be right in the they mix. They wanted him to join them yes, at their work. next meeting, and uh -huh. we, I, I, dig, I made a digital copy of yes. it, but he, I also have that in my office okay. to give to Anthony. So it was good, I think. Yeah. Anthony, you got anything to add? No, it was, it's always a good meeting. It's, it's interesting to talk to people. Um, you know, as frustrated as we sometimes get, it's just a reminder of, you know, the really, I think, dedicated public servants and dedicated residents of the various communities here that take the time to serve on the boards, and I think we're lucky that, that, that people are able to do that and also, do do that. Also, the village and the park district were there, and so the village... Yeah, the park district talked about Gilson's going down. I was running, I was down in the park yesterday. It's gone. <laughs> really? The beach it, house, the, the beach house, house is gone. Yeah. And there's wow. a big, um, you know, I, you know, I was going to sort of walk around the lake, you know, not, nah, you know, I'm going like, oh, okay. So they've got a big construction fence up there. And then you got the storm water. So, yeah, the and then they side. talk about the storm yep. water and how the village and the, the park, park district. district need to work that out. So, mm -hmm. and the tax base that was lost with Carson's has an impact on the village. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do they mean by educational supplements? He just says, you know, in terms of just supplementing the education, because one of the things I asked was how might the library be of assistance, yeah. because the library reaches out to them. Yeah. And so that's one of the ways. And so they're out there talking to them as basically one of the things in terms of that we I've often thought of and that's been mentioned is that Say, for instance, if they're doing all kinds of things with technology with the kids, do the parents really understand it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, could the library be a resource? That's right. all. That's a, that might be an mm -hmm. example yeah. of supplementing the education in terms of what the parents Thank have increased the understanding. Right. Mm -hmm. One quick item 
that I wanted to mention is that uh, Betty and I went over to the village and talked about one of my favorite subjects, which is biking. Um, mm -hmm. I really, did I say too much about in the role no. as a library? No. no, it's basically about what Kathleen wants is in, in the bike world. <laughs> Although we did talk about some of the things that we do as an institution, um, which, you know, Betty outlined, you know, we have a bike to your library day. We now make um, locks available for anyone who wants to lock up their bike and forgot to bring mm -hmm. their lock, which, you know, is always good to know. Uh, we talk, I know that I've seen as a patron every year at the beginning of the summer, you know, displays that are put up on, on trails and things like that, and I've checked them out and they're very useful. So those are sort of the typical things yeah. that we do. We've had the Wilmot Bicycle um, Shop has come in to do, and our bike did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to do safety checks and mm -hmm. helmet fittings. Right. And so. I think they're, they're actually having an open house about biking um, and transportation, they, yeah. which is the, the 27th? Yeah, yeah it's so that's Thursday. Actually, yeah, this Thursday. Thursday. Mm -hmm. and it's, the, I think it's at the Village Hall. I'm not and sure. I feel as though I've vented long enough. I don't need to. But there, this was a focus yeah. group for... Um, right. The village, for village, stakeholders, various stakeholders. So the, the park, park district. district talked about a couple of things that they do that I right. had no idea they were super interesting. They have a yeah. camp that they call Camp Fusion, hmm. and it's they said it's not an inexpensive camp, but it closed, it, registration closed out, what she said, about seven minutes after it opened. Right. Because wow. you get a bike. You get a bike. Oh. That's what makes it so Attendees expensive. Attendees to get a bike. So you get, Jeez. you sign up for this camp, you get a bike, and it's the typical, as I understand it, it's sort of a lot of the typical day camp type things, that, you know, the beach, Centennial here, but the kids all bike, bike. as a group yes. all around the village. Oh, that's uh, great. Uh, and they're, they, they yeah. get as far as yeah. up to the Botanic Garden. By, really? by the end of the yeah. summer, which I thought was super yeah. cool. So we yeah. suggested that it would be good to do it for adults too. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so I thought that Including was super the cool. Yeah. <laughs> so it was. Did the kids get helmets oh, okay. too? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a bike and helmet. So they, you know, and and so the so the kids at the end of the summer, of course, come away with a bike. That's part of the the cost of the registration. Nice. So that's why it's a little bit pricier. But they said it sells out. You know, almost immediately. Okay, right. jam. Okay, a um, couple of things. Let's see, one is that if you turn to page three in that first part, uh, Karen Joshi's position is already advertised okay. in the ILA bulletin, which you knew. Um, something interesting on page four the 10 great libraries for kids in Chicago and suburbs. So of course I went online and expected to see Will Met there. Well, we're not there, but two of the activities that we do were profiled. One is the um, tent thing mm -hmm. almost, you know, that Karen did so long ago. And the other are the blue building blocks, which ah, was uh, yeah. the last one. So uh, Evanston uh, nudged us out for that because <laughs> they had it. Oh, we do too, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but that was kind of interesting to see what the different things were that people were talking about. Okay, then I'm going to skip to the next one, the September 12th. And uh, the one that was interesting here is on page five. And there was an article about to restore civil society, start with the library. Uh, the idea behind that is that the library welcomes all different kinds of people. And it's kind of a safe space to air your views and hear other people's views. Uh -huh. And uh, that's the idea behind it. And so given that there's a lot of uncivil behavior at this point, it's nice to have a place where people can go and have civil interactions with people, and that is the library. So that's a plus that you don't think about it that way uh, a lot. And then the next one, September 6th, um, probably read about this, but on page two, they have the two public act, the House bills, addresses eligibility of residents to serve as library trustees, and we've already mm -hmm. talked about that here. And then the public acts, if the board of directors determines to extend library service, 
service privileges to non-residents, et cetera, they may now extend use to someone that leases or rents property mm -hmm. and not just somebody who actually owns property. Mm -hmm. So that's a little new how much that will affect us, probably not much at all. I don't know. We'll see. Then the uh, next one on page five. Uh, the article here that caught my eye was how two thieves stole thousands of prints from university libraries. Mm. The reason it caught my eye was because I had just finished reading a book about that very <laughs> topic <laughs> in which the perpetrators, uh, one of whom was murdered and the other uh, was sent to jail, uh, nothing like this. These guys came and did exactly what the book said, cut yeah. things out. Mm. and many libraries and just the two of them. You know, they would take like 1,300 rare illustrations out of these books and just completely destroy the books. They didn't take the books except at the very end when um, they decided that they were doing so well with taking out the pictures, they decided to take the books. Well, that was a big mistake.